Hey, this is David Avalon, and I believe everyone should strive to be a top player. Now, in this day and age in sport jiu-jitsu, it seems very popular now for people to butt scoot and, you know, look for Birimbolos, half guard, and it's, you know, you can watch any tournament and you're going to see two people race to the bottom, try to butt scoot to each other and figure out who's going to be the bottom player. Especially now that we have submission-only tournaments, there's a lot of people who are now just forgetting about takedowns and they're just dropping right to their butt right away to go for leg locks, 50-50, etc. Personally, I think that's a mistake. I think that we're getting to the moment where BJJ, at least sport BJJ, is jumping the shark. All right. Uh, keep in mind, we're in the martial arts. We're supposed to be prepared for a self-defense scenario. And the rule set for jiu-jitsu is designed to score points based on dominance in a fight. So, you know, there's a few reasons why I consider top position to be superior to bottom. First being striking. When I'm on top, I have the best strikes. I have gravity giving me an assist, and since you're on bottom, you have very little mobility. You know, when you're on your feet and you get hit, you can move with the strike. You know, when you're on the ground, though, there's very little motion, especially body strikes, because you have no way to move with a punch. You're taking the full impact. And when you also consider that you have, um, you know, concrete, and you get hit in the head, and your head rocks back and hits the concrete, that's also going to suck. All right, so again, top position makes... Uh, striking much more effective. Second reason is you can disengage. And this might seem uh, a little counterintuitive, but if I'm on top and for whatever reason I want to move away from somebody, I easily can, right? If I'm like side control, I want to back out, I can back out. If I'm on bottom side control, it's not that easy. I have to, you know, use my underhook, shrimp out, and it depends on the amount of effort I put and my skill set. Whereas if I'm on top, I just have to walk away from somebody nine times out of ten. And why might you do this? Well, one, the person might have a weapon that you didn't realize. So you took him down and now he has a knife and he's trying to stab you. I want to get away from that guy? I can if I'm on top. If I'm on bottom, it's going to be a lot trickier. And two, if he has buddies that are trying to cheap shot you, I can easily disengage if I'm the top guy. Not so if I'm the bottom person. Okay, so that's the second reason. Third reason, options and control. Okay, if I'm on top, I usually am controlling the pace of the match. If I want to pressure the guy hard and pass fast, he's going to have to move with me. If I want to stall and, you know, lay and pray, I can also do that. If I want to get on my back, like I just want to flop over, I can. These same things are harder to be done from bottom. There are exceptions, like rubber guard, you can really slow down the match if you want to, but mostly top person dictates the pace and has more options. So, for those reasons, I think, oh, I almost forgot the main one, the fourth reason, which is the biggest one if you're a sport competitor. All the points are scored from top. Guard pass, takedown, mount, even sweeps. Even though you, you, you're doing it from the bottom, you only get scored when you get on top. Okay, and there, there's a reason why the jiu-jitsu scoring system is that way. Because, for example, mount, it's, you get four points. Why? Because it's like the best striking position you can have. Similarly, back mount. You know, when you're not following the mohawk rule, strikes to the back of the head will finish somebody real fast. Okay? Likewise, side control. You're outside the guard, it's less entanglement, you're going to strike better. All right, so for all those reasons, being on top, puts you in a better position to finish a fight and gives you more options than it would being on bottom. Now, that's not to say, you know, oh, the guard sucks or any of the variants of it. No, I understand there's a, obviously a very good self-defense application to having the guard. And, you know, you can obviously win fights there and better defend yourself. But when you fall back on it as your only option or the, your main option to defend yourself, I think you're leaving a lot on the table. Now, there are a few reasons why you would want to pull guard or go to your back. One, you get rocked from a punch, a strike, or whatnot, and you're unable to defend yourself intelligently, even though I can't say 
<laughs> without stumbling, all right? So you get hit with a big kick or a big punch and you're wobbly. If you stay in your feet, you're gonna be a real easy target. So those are times that dropping to your guard are beneficial because one, you buy yourself a little time and two, if you're able to wrap them up, get an overhook or tie them up in a close guard, it's gonna minimize his power and mobility, giving you time to recover. Okay, so I understand that perfectly valid use. Second good reason to drop to your back, the person you're fighting is vastly superior in wrestling and you want to control how you end up on your back, which is important because I don't want someone to slam me, you know, Kevin Randleman style or, you know, Rampage Jackson. So I'd rather go down on my terms, especially if we're talking about concrete. I don't want to get slammed on concrete. Again, another valid reason. Third one is that you're not able to score from the standing position or from top and you need to win this contest so you need to change the strategy and especially if you're a competitor that's a valid case i know myself i've done that on a couple occasions the very first time i ever pulled guard must have been like in 2000 or 2001 i was fighting ufc vet uh george santiago and uh he was a brown belt at the time and I was probably a year or two of training. I was trying to take him down and I couldn't. He had a great sprawl and he almost put me in a guillotine. So after like a minute or so of me just, you know, getting shut down in the wrestling game, I said, you know what? Let me go to my back. It was a big shocker because nobody had ever seen me on my back in competition at that time. And I know even my coach, my brother was so surprised when I did it. But uh, it worked out quite well. Because nobody had ever seen me doing it, it was a surprise. And I was able to hit a, one of my only arm bars in competition. It was a flower arm bar that I got him to tap with. So I understand the strategic value of changing up and occasionally going on your back if you need to. Again, this was a sports scenario, but still could be valid in a street fight as well. But overall, I think our goal should be to always work to be on top. All right, Because of the reasons I mentioned before. Now, if you are a guard player or you know, a half guard player, a 50-50 guy who's always working on your back, my question to you is why are you doing it? Is it because you don't know how to wrestle? Well, then guess what? You should learn some wrestling. Is it because whenever you're on top, you get submitted? Well, then you need to work on your submission defense. Or you just don't know how to get past the guard? Well... You need to work on passing your guard, right? And you can see the logic here. It just goes on and on. Essentially, when you have to rely on going your back right off the get-go and conceding top position, there generally is a hole in your game that right now you're just jumping over. But eventually, you'll miss that jump and you're going to land hard. So instead of avoiding a particular situation, you need to confront it and fill up that hole so that it becomes solid ground that you go walk on, right? So again, you're a bottom guy, ask yourself the honest questions. Why am I always going on my back right away? And nine times out of 10, there's a hole in your game that you're, you're not addressing, so you're avoiding it by going to bottom first, all right? So when you're in training especially, that's when you need to fill those holes. I understand now we've put you in a competition scenario it's not the time to fill the hole. It's too late. You gotta, you know, you gotta have to work around it. And if that means pulling guard, so be it. But in training, you should be filling holes up. And this works for top guys too. If you're all your, if you're a great top guy, excellent wrestler, you never end up on your back. But in training, you also never train being on your back. That is a problem as well. And it's similar because one day someone will put you on your butt. And if you don't know how to defend yourself there, you're gonna be in problems. Again, we're in the martial arts. We're supposed to be able to defend ourselves from as many situations as possible and if you're specifically avoiding a situation because you don't know how to deal with it yet that's when training is the time when you do it all right so go ahead ask yourself those hard questions figure out what you're avoiding and start working on it so it can become one of your strengths instead of one of your weaknesses now if you enjoy this or if you agree disagree go ahead uh Comment down below, email me. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Thank you. 
Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. That way you'll be alerted when the next video drops. Now, if you want to get more videos like this on a daily basis, go and visit my membership site at ffacoach.com. We have online video curriculums, our daily videos, and you can get bonus courses like the Kimura Trap System for free when you enroll today. So go ahead and help support the channel and visit today.